Good afternoon and happy Wednesday, kindergarten boys and girls. For those of you who were not able to join us last week, my name is Miss Phil and Jim, and I am an ARI reading coach for Mobile County Public School System. For those of you um, who did join us last week, I'm so happy to have you back with us for our next phonics lesson. Now, before we get started, I do want to say how proud I am of all of you boys and girls working at home. I have seen so many pictures and videos of you working from last week's um, phonics lesson with the w sound. I saw pictures of kids tracing their W's. I saw pictures of you going on a scavenger hunt looking for those w sounds, and it makes me so proud. I even saw one student who made waffles one morning with their grandparents. So keep up the great work. Um, parents, we know we're not in the buildings with our students, so it's great to see those pictures of your kids working at home, and I know the teachers are just as proud. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, this, today we're going to learn a new sound, but before we do that, I want to warm up our ears and work on some phonemic awareness. Now when we do that, we are segmenting our sounds, and so we're going to play a game of head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I think we're all familiar with that game. If Miss Fillingham says a word that has two sounds, we're going to say that beginning sound, we're going to tap our head, and then that final sound will be on our shoulders. If I say a word that has three sounds, then we're going to start with our head, then that middle sound will be on our shoulders, and then we will go to our knees. So this is going to have, I need everybody to stand up with me so we can play head, shoulders, knees, and toes. All right, so I'm going to give you an example. My first word is go. So I would do g o. That beginning sound is g, and my final sound is o. If I said a word such as wet, we would do w, e, t, because that word has three sounds, okay? So let's play head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Our first word is it, i, t. Very good, that word has two sounds. I was the beginning sound, and t was my final sound. The next word, wet. W, et. Good job. Wish. W, e, sh. Awesome. Now remember, we are counting sounds, not letters. That, that word wish had three sounds. W, e, sh. Here's another one. Go. G, o. Awesome job. Vote. V, o, t. Great job. Now today we're going to learn a sound that actually makes two sounds. Listen to this sound. When I make the sound, that first sound I hear is and my tongue makes a hump in the back of my mouth, like in kite. Say that sound with me. Awesome job. Now that is followed by the sound as in snake. So I make the and then I have all right, so our new sound is actually two sounds. Kss. Say that sound with me one more time. Kss. Awesome job. So I went on another scavenger hunt at my house, and my key object today is going to be a box. Notice what sound you hear at the end of that word, box. I hear the kss sound. And when we are working with words that have the kss sound, it's going to make that sound at the end of the word. Okay, so as I pull out objects out of my box, we're going to go back to our head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and we're going to segment every sound that we hear in our objects. So when I was looking for some objects, I found a different kind of box. Do any of you have something like this at your house? Let's see what this might do. We have a jack rabbit. So we have a jack in the box. And notice that box ends in the k sound. So let's segment box together. Ready? B, a, k. Now I'm going to touch my toes on that one because box is actually making four sounds. Watch me again. B, a, k. I hear four sounds. Remember, we're counting sounds, not letters. So box has four sounds. Another object I found, and some of you might recognize this guy, fox in socks. What sound do you hear at the end of fox? The x sound. Awesome job. Let's segment the sounds in the word fox. 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 Very good. I heard four sounds again. Let's see what else I have in my box. Now this is a type of dinosaur that some of you might know. 
I'm going to call him my T-Rex. Rex. What sound do you hear at the end of Rex? Awesome job. Let's do head, shoulders, knees, and toes with Rex. R -E -X. Rex. Awesome job. Now, all of these objects are ending in the X sound. Now, this is a number, and some of you might have already turned this age, or you might be turning this age, and this is the number six. And six also ends in the X sound. So let's segment the number six. 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 Awesome job. We're getting some exercise in today. And my last object, I found this in the kitchen, and I use this when I am mixing up some ingredients. If I'm going to bake a cake, I have several ingredients that I need to mix in this bowl. So my word is mix, and we're going to segment those sounds. M -I -K -S, mix. Awesome job. So I found a lot of objects that end in the k sound. And notice that they all had four sounds because that k -S is really two sounds. The k and s is two sounds. Now I'm going to show you the letter that represents the sound when it is found at the end of a word. And this letter is the letter X. When X is at the end of a word, it makes two sounds. Now this is the only consonant that is um, represented with two sounds when it's found at the end of a word. And we can remember that because the letter X is at the end of our alphabet. T-U-V-W-X-Y-Z. So X makes two sounds when it's at the end of our word. So let's practice tracing just like we did last week. We're going to take our pointer finger, we're going to keep our eyes on our letter card, and we're going to trace the letter X. All right, now notice that this X has a little monkey tail, and this is our Danilian font. So we're going to trace this letter X, and as we trace, we're going to say the letter name, and then we're going to say its sound. Okay, so we're all pointer fingers up. I'm going to look at the letter X as well. We're going to trace and say the sound. Ready? Let's trace. X. X, 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 awesome job. Now take that pointer finger and let's trace on our leg. X, 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 great job. This is a letter X and it says X. So now we're going to move into reading and blending words. And I'm going to put this up here so we can remember our X. And Ms. Phil and Jim's going to do the first one with you. Now remember, I'm going to do sound, sound, and then we're going to blend. Ah. Uh, ox. This word is ox. Okay? I want you to do the next one with me. And this time, I'm going to add a different beginning sound. So my middle sound is ah, uh, and my final sound is x. So that's three sounds, but I only have two letters. Watch this one. Say the sound, b. Very good. Remember, this is our bat and our ball. This is the letter B that says b. My ending is going to stay the same. Ah. Let's blend. B. Ox. Box. Very good. Okay, let's do another one together. Sound. Ah. Good job. Sound. Awesome. Blend that. Ax. Very good. Let's do the same thing and let's add a different beginning sound. And this is the sound we learned last week. Sound. W. Very good. Sound. A. And then our final sound. X. Let's blend it all. W. Ax. Wax. Awesome job, boys and girls. You're all working hard this afternoon. Okay? Now, inside of your packets, if you have your packet, you should have your word dictation pack paper just like last week. And if you don't, that's okay. You can use regular line paper. So we're going to write some words that end with the x sound. Now our routine for that, remember, I'm going to say the word, and I want you to pound the word, and then we will touch spell that word, okay? And I'm going to use my fingers in the air so you can see those clearly. I know in class you might finger tap or you use your tap mats, but we're going to count the sounds, and then we will spell together. All right, my first word is going to be six. Pound, six. Tap that out. Six. Now I'm going to hold that last sound because we're going to have three letters, but that last sound is making how many sounds? Who can tell me? Two sounds. Very good. So let's write this word together. 
What letter says s? Awesome. S. My middle sound is that vowel, short vowel, i. I. And then what letter makes two sounds? X. Awesome job. That would be our X. This word is six. Okay? My next word. Let's do Max. And this could be a boy's name or I've heard some dogs named Max. And so we know when we're writing someone's name, that first letter needs to be capitalized. My word is Max. Let's pound it. Max. Touch spell. M. X. What letter says M? Okay, that's going to be our capital M. A. A, A, A. What letter says A? A. Very good. And my final sound is X. X is at the end of this word and it's making two sounds. Very good. All right, my next word. Let's do the word tux. Pound. Tux. Tap. Tux. Very good. Let's write this word. T. T. Uh, uh. Like umbrella. Our short vowel U. And then the final sound is X. Great job. Tucks. Okay, and this last word, I'm going to let you do this one on your own, and then we'll check it really quickly. The word is fix. Fix. Pound it. Tap. And then write. And that beginning sound, I heard, what letter says? F. Awesome job. I. Short vowel I. And that final sound, the X. Good job, boys and girls. Let's go back and read these words that we wrote. So let's start from the top to bottom. Our first word is six. Good job. Max. Tux. And fix. Awesome job. Now, which one of these words, we're going to do some vocabulary with you for a second. Which one of these words, if we break something, what would we have to do to that object? If something breaks, we might have to... Fix it. Good job. Okay, and this word is short for tuxedo. You might have seen some people wear a tuxedo before, and this word is tux. Okay, that's like a fancy jacket. Someone might wear that to a fancy formal event or a wedding or a dance. That is tux. And then we talked about Max could be someone's name, and then we all know that six is one of our number words. Awesome job, boys and girls. Now let's take it one step further, and let's write our sentence today. All right, we're going to pound every word in the sentence, okay? This one's a little bit longer than last week. This one has more words, but I know you can do it. The sentence is, she fed the mix to the fox. Let's pound it. She fed the mix to the fox. One more time. She fed the mix to the fox. So I'm hearing seven words in that sentence, okay? And that first word is she, okay? And what do we know about the first word in a sentence? It has to be capitalized. So let's write she, and we know the sh sound is made of two letters, which are S, H, and then E. So she fed, and fed is a consonant, vowel, consonant. I want you to sound that out and try writing fed on your own. Fed. That first sound, that is our F. Then I hear a short vowel, eh, like in the edge of my table. That's E. And our final sound, d, d. And we remember writing a D, we have the drum stick, and then we have the drum. Let's make sure we write the D correctly. She fed. Now, what did she feed? The mix. And the is one of our sight words. Remember, we cannot sound those words out. So let's do our sight word routine with the. We pull that, that word down, the, and then we tap out the letters. T-H-E, the. All right, let's write the together. She fed the mix. Awesome job. Now, mix has our new sound at the end. Okay, so pound out that word mix. Mix, mm, x. Let's write it. She fed the mix to, that's a sight word, pull down two, two, t o two. Very good. Then we have sight word the again, so we're going to write that here. She fed the mix to the 
Fox, very good. Let's pound out Fox. Fox, tap it out. Ox, awesome job, guys. Let's write that. Let's check our spelling. Ox, that X is making two sounds. Awesome job. Now, we're not asking a question. We do not see a question word at the beginning of our sentence. So what type of punctuation do we need to end this sentence? Awesome job. We need a period. So you're making a statement. Now, who did she feed the mix to? The fox. Very good. Awesome job, boys and girls. Now, I am going to read a story to you. And as I'm reading this story, I want you, when you hear the wor a word that ends in the k sound, I want you to form an X with your hands. So take your two hands, just like this, and put them together and say k Awesome job. Now, I'm going to read a story called The Birthday Box by Leslie Petroselli. So all the words in this, in this story, you're going to hear the word box several times. So I want you to make that X and say X when you hear that sound. All right, The Birthday Box. Now, before I start reading, I do want to say, when I picked this book to read to you today, I thought about all the boys and girls who have birthdays in the month of March, April, May, June, and July. And normally, we would be in school and we're able to celebrate with you but we're not. And so since we're not able to, I wanted to wish all of you boys and girls with birthdays that fall in these months a very happy birthday. Send you a big virtual happy birthday hug and tell you happy birthday from all of your teachers. Okay, and we hope you make many memories at home celebrating your birthday. Let's get started with our story, The Birthday Box. Look, I got a present. What is it? Rip. It's a box, a big brown box. I see those hands making X's saying X. I stand on my box. I am taller than a tree. I give my box a hug. Shh, where am I? Boo, here I am. Look, there's a hole. Is there something inside? It's a doggy. I name him Oscar, and we get inside my box. I see you making your X's. We fly in an airplane over the ocean. We sail a ship, and I am the captain. We slide through the snow. Look out below. We cut some holes in my box. Snip, snip, snip. I am a robot. Robot hungry. Robot fetch snack, I tell Oscar. We sit and we eat. It's my birthday, so we have some cake. Oscar is tired, and I am tired too. I get two pillows and a blanket, and I put them in my box. We get into bed for our nap, and I tell Oscar a story. I am very lucky, the story goes. Today is my birthday, and I got a box. Very good. Now, this little boy, we were learning the box, and we learned the sound, but this little boy used his imagination, and he was very creative with his box, and he was very excited about getting a puppy for his birthday. But I think when I was reading, he was just as excited about getting a, a puppy as he was getting this box. So I know you're at home and there's not much we can do, but I challenge you to look around your house and find a box and see if you can turn that box into something. Be very creative like the little boy was. They made an airplane, they made a ship, they made a sled, a robot, and then finally they went to bed in their box. And it doesn't have to be a big box. You can find a shoe box um, and see what you could do or what you could turn that box into. All right, boys and girls, today has been a fantastic day with you all. I want to leave you with some things that you can do at home. Um, of course, like I said earlier, I love seeing your pictures. So if you are going outside and playing in the sand and tracing that X, parents send pictures of that. If you want to go on your own scavenger hunt and find objects to put inside of your box, that's an awesome idea too. Um, inside of your packets, you have, let's see, you have some letter tiles that look like this. And even if you don't have these, you can write letters on sticky notes or on slips of paper and try to build words that end with the x sound. And you can um, build words and then go back and read those words and put those words in complete sentences. And also, I have on the board 
a tic-tac-toe board. Now, you know when we play tic-tac-toe, what are the letters that we use when we play tic-tac-toe? We use X's and we use O's. So you can play this game with anyone in your house, and what you could do is have them challenge you by giving you a word that ends with the X sound, such as box, and if you spell that word correctly, B-O-X, then you would put an X in your square. And then ask someone else a word. And if they get that word and they spell it correctly, then they can put their O. And whoever gets three in a row, they win the game. So that's something else you can do practicing um, writing your X and saying it sound. Awesome job, boys and girls. It's been a fantastic day. Um, tune in this Friday. I'll have read aloud time at 8.30 Friday morning. I can't wait to see you there. And I will see the rest of you next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Have a great day.